And I would like to introduce to you now our speaker. For those of you who do not know Sean, he is the St. Joseph County Treasurer, and he serves as a board member for the Indiana chapter of the National MS Society. Sean and Kate were married on June 10th, 1989, and then they became the proud parents of Maggie on June 1st, 1992. Ladies and gentlemen, Sean Coleman. Thank you, and uh, let me begin by saying how deeply grateful I am to all of you for being here today to support the MS Society and to pay such an overwhelming tribute to Kate. I uh, hope you appreciated the two-minute warning to uh, get up and go if you needed to go anywhere. Don't you just hate it when you realize 20 seconds after the speaker takes to the podium that you had to, but forgot to go. And you know what's worse is though, when if you get up, you do get up to go in time, but for some unknown reason, you, you just can't. I want you to imagine what it might be like to have that urge to go all the time, whether you really have to or not and then not being able to go or not going completely when you do and knowing as a result you could come down with an infection that you might not realize because you can't recognize the usual symptoms because you just can't quite feel that part of your anatomy and a simple infection that you're unaware of could trigger an MS attack that within 24 to 48 hours could take away your ability to walk, to move your arms, to speak and take food, and severely damage your neurological functions. This is very well what may have happened to Kate in the MS attack that led to her death. I, uh, I wanted to get through the toughest stuff right away. For Kate, MS meant the specter of a shortened lifespan was always lurking in the shadows. However, many people with MS have a normal life expectancy, and many people living with MS do not experience the dramatic attack that can do so much damage in such a short period of time. MS is a very unpredictable disease, and its symptoms and effects vary from one person to another. We may never know for sure what triggered the devastating effects that overwhelmed Kate in her final battle with MS. This, however, is not a story about how Kate died. This is the story of how Kate fought to live her life to the fullest, despite the challenges she battled with her disease. It's a story of courage, determination, and it is a story of hope, Kate's hope. Kate grew up the youngest of seven children. There was no history of MS in her family. She was a good student, an athlete, and a cheerleader. In her 20s, she was a softball player, hot-headed, they tell me, <laughs> and a league bowler who once rolled a perfect game. She worked full time while taking classes at IUSB, and there is a rumor that Kate was Michiana's unofficial mechanical bull riding champion in her urban cowgirl days. <laughs> uh, but this story really begins in 1989, just weeks after Kate and I had returned from our honeymoon. On a Saturday morning, Kate mentioned as she started to get dressed, my legs are numb and tingly, like they're still asleep. And just like that, Kate's life with MS began. She was 30. The actual diagnosis did not come in until after a battery of tests, blood work, MRIs, evoke potentials, spinal taps. 
Kate learned she had MS as the year ended. So she rang in the new year, 1990, with an MS diagnosis for which there was no known cause, no known cure, no known treatment, and no known hope. And the numbness and tingling never went away. One day I got home from work. Uh, Kate looked at me and said dryly, my legs don't work. She may as well have said, the car won't start, or we're out of milk. Kate would use her sense of humor many times throughout the next 18 years to downplay the impact of her disease. Whether it was Christmas or her birthday, when I would ask Kate what she wanted, her answer was always the same. With a wry smile, she would say, I want to run. Or if MS had knocked her off her feet, she would say, I want to walk. Kate's sister won a trip to Hawaii for Kate by participating in an MS Society-sponsored bike race. Here we are at the top of Diamond Head in January 1992. Despite being four months pregnant, with the numbness and tingling in her legs, and Herman Munster feet, as she called them, because she always felt like she was walking in oversized boots. Kate trudged all the way to the top, including the last leg, up a steep staircase through a tunnel to the rim of the volcano itself. When we got to that staircase tunnel, Kate looked up and said, let's go for it. Kate was very determined, and the view of her at the top was breathtaking. On that same trip, a few days later, Kate began experiencing severe nerve pain and struggled through a 24-hour trip home. A month later, she was admitted to the med center because her legs weren't working. She was having trouble lifting her arms and clearing her throat. Three months later, she was back in again, but this time, it was not MS related. That's me, Kate, Maggie, and our family physician, Dr. John Powell, just after Maggie's birth. Would MS stop Kate from living a full life? You can decide. On June 1st, 1993, we celebrated Maggie's first birthday. We also celebrated Kate's graduation from IUSD. That same year, we decided to build a new home. Kate's career path began to unfold. In 1994, she became the HR director at the Visiting Nurse Association. In 